fire at the ruling party's headquarters. In Taliban heartland, indigenous Australians. ABC News. ABC News. Hear no evil. Justin Madden admits he was in the room when the Windsor Hotel plot was hatched. Clamour to close a dangerous level crossing after another death. Tight security has accused terrorist Abu Bakr Bashir appears in court. And some profit hang-ups, but the minister upbeat about Telstra's NBN agreement. Good evening, Ian Henderson with ABC News. Victoria's Ombudsman has found former Planning Minister Justin Madden attended two meetings at which a plot was hatched to rot the consultation process for the Windsor Hotel redevelopment. Mr Madden admits he was present but maintains he didn't hear the discussions. He's blamed the plot on a former media advisor who's quoted as saying she took a hit over the affair. The Bailey government says it's a scandal and Mr Madden should resign from Parliament. Josie Taylor reports. Justin Madden doesn't like interruptions. I've... excuse me. Sorry, I, I'm having trouble hearing. He blames being distracted for failing to hear his chief of staff discuss a corruption of the planning process. And in that meeting there were a number of discussions, overlapping discussions taking place and if comments were made in that sense I was not party to those comments in the sense that I did not hear them. Last year, the ABC revealed an email from Justin Madden's then media advisor, Peter Duke. It contained a strategy to pervert the planning process for the multi-million dollar redevelopment of the Windsor Hotel by using fake consultation to stop the project. Mr Madden repeatedly said the idea was Peter Duke's alone. He later approved the controversial project. But the Ombudsman's found Mr Madden was present at a meeting last year when his Chief of Staff raised the idea of a sham consultation. One week later, Mr Madden had a conversation at Parliament House with his media adviser about the project. The next day, she sent her now infamous email. The former planning minister was in the room when the plot was hatched. The government says Mr Madden should consider whether he's fit to stay in Parliament. What is the former Minister for Planning doing on the front bench? The Ombudsman also reveals Labor's former Attorney General Rob Hulls repeatedly tried to stop the watchdog's probe, writing, your jurisdiction does not extend to the investigation of ministers or advisers. One has to assume that the government was desperate to obtain reasons to avoid cooperating with the Ombudsman. Perhaps because of correspondence from within the former Premier's office, which has now been made public. One advisor wrote to Peter Duke that John Brumby's communications chief needs to keep you quiet till November, the time of the state election. Peter Duke wrote she had taken the hit for what had occurred and she'd been given commitments about her future. Mr Madden says he won't resign, but he concedes the whole affair may be part of the reason Labor's now in opposition. And Josie Taylor joins us now live. Josie, how is Justin Madden's future prospects looking now? To what extent has he damaged goods? Well, Ian, this whole affair has mortally wounded Justin Madden. He's the celebrity candidate who actually moved to the lower house last year in a bid to fulfil leadership aspirations. Instead, he'll be forever linked to this scandal, which was the creation of his own office. Now, Mr Madden says that the Ombudsman did not directly lay blame with him, and that, to some extent, is true. But what the Ombudsman did reveal is that Mr Madden had no idea of what was going on in his own private office, and that he, in fact, just tuned out during a crucial meeting. So it's hard to believe that if Labor actually stayed in power last November, that Mr Madden would have been able to stay on as planning minister. Nonetheless, opposition leader Daniel Andrews is standing by him, and Mr Madden will remain on Labor's front bench. And Josie, what do you think the legacy of this affair for Labor will be for the Labor now that it's in opposition? 
Well, this report is just highly embarrassing for Labor on a number of fronts. Firstly, the Ombudsman was critical of John Brumby and Justin Madden for just not knowing what their ministerial advisers were getting up to. And it wasn't just Peter Duke. She, in fact, has been the scapegoat for this whole affair. The Ombudsman found that there was a wider, inappropriate culture of behaviour among advisers. In fact, some of them spent their time trying to get free tickets to major events like the Grand Prix. So for Labor, this whole scandal has certainly tarnished its legacy, particularly the last year in government, and now they're in opposition, has certainly damaged their credibility. Josie, thank you.